Hello, Mr. David. It's an honor to meet you. <laughs> Um, first, can you tell us something about you, like who you are, where do you live, do you have any hob hobbies, or can you mention a few movies um, in which you can be seen? Well, my name is Keith David, and uh, I just just came from Berlin, making a new movie called Cloud Atlas. Um, the directors were the Wachowskis and Tom Tikva, and uh, starring Tom Hanks and Halle Berry. And Hugh Grant and some really, really wonderful actors, and I'm looking very forward to it. And Oliver Stone's Platoon, uh, you played King, one of the leading roles, roles uh, next to Charlie Sheen, Forrest Whitaker, Johnny Depp, and Willem Dafoe. Can you tell us something about the work on this project? Uh, for example, in which county, country did the shootings take place? Uh, were they exhausting? Or do you remember funny moments? Oh, I, uh, the Platoon was my. Um, second movie, really. I've done some t I've done a TV movie before that, and it was a wonderful time. And as you mentioned, it was a great cast, and most of the guys that uh, were in that movie with me have now, 25 years later, become big stars. And I was, uh, I was very uh, conspicuously aware that I was in good company. And in the company of really wonderful men and great, great actors. And it was a wonderful experience for me. We shot that in the Philippines. Uh, it was a 50-day shoot, I think. And uh, it was extraordinary because we got to really live the, live the life of a rifle platoon. Yeah. We trained for two weeks with the... Uh, Filipino constabulary, and uh, we really had to get out there in the trenches, dig our own trenches, and uh, we ate MRIs, and we, you know, were really like, um, it, it was like we were in boot camp. And uh, so by the time we got to the movie, all of the stuff, the orders that we were given, the formations that we had to line up in, became second nature, and that was the whole purpose of it. So we weren't, uh, we didn't look like, you know, actors, you know, pretending to be in the army. But at, by, that, by that time, we had really been indoctrinated enough and trained enough that uh, we felt like a rifle platoon. Thank you, soldiers. Um, a short question because I am a secretly fan of Finn Teaser. <laughs> he played the, religi the religious guy next to him in Pitch Black in Chronicles of Riddick. Um, is he a nice guy and how tall is he in reality? I guess Finn, we're, we're talking about uh, Pitch Black and Vin Diesel's probably about six feet. You know, uh, I'm six two. Um, I'd, say, I'd say he's at least six feet. I, I don't know literally, but. Uh, certainly has that kind of stature. And it was a, again, it was a wonderful experience being away in Australia where we shot it. Hmm. I played an imam, which is like a, a Muslim bishop, I guess he would be like a, 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 another religion, he'd be the, the equivalent of a bishop. Um, myself, being a student of spirit, um, it, was, it was great to be able to explore an area that I hadn't been quite familiar with. So I, you know, I, I studied some Arabic to learn the part, and I also did a lot of reading up on Islam and the role of an imam within the within the culture. Um, what kind of movies do you like personally most, and what's your favorite one? Uh, I love doing comedies because I don't get a chance to do that very much. No, I mean to watch. Oh, to What watch kind of movies? the movies I like to watch. Yeah. I like uh, mysteries. Love mysteries. Uh, I love action adventure, and you know I also love you know romantic comedies or, or romantic movies. You know, you know. Kind of I like movies about people um, that um, that really get to. Uh, get to reflect our mutual humanity, you know, and, uh, and, and that's the one thing I love about actors, 
is uh, you know we get to we get to explore what it is to be a human being, and in a good movie with a good story, you get to see your own humanity reflected. I get to see my humanity reflected. I get to see what we have in common as people, no matter you know you know what culture we happen to be from. Because basically, we all want the same things. We all want to be loved. We all want to share love. We all want to work. We want to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to, you know, be good fathers, be good husbands, be good boyfriends. You know, and uh, a good story will, you know, depending on the nature of that story, will get to touch on all those things. Can you uh, tell us one of your favorite movies? One of my favorite movies is Sunset Boulevard. Sunset Boulevard. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I happen to be a big fan of old movies. Uh, James Cagney movies. Uh, Edward G. Robinson. Those kinds. I've seen that. <laughs> gangster. I love gangster movies. Uh, gangster movies. Okay. Um, Up until now, you can be seen in nearly 200 movies and different different TV series. Um, is there a difference between shooting for television or shooting for big screen? One of the main differences between shooting for television and shooting for movies is um, in a movie you have more time. You have more time to flesh out the character. You have more time to actually shoot the movie, so you can you know get more angles. You can. Uh, get to tell a, you know, a visual story a little bit clearer. But, you know, good TV directors also kind of accomplish the same thing in a shorter amount of time. Uh, but mostly I think it's timing and budget is the, uh, the main difference that I see right now. Um, do you have any role models like other actors or, or directors? I loved working with John Carpenter. I think... Uh, Clint Eastwood was one of my favorite directors because he was just wonderfully respectful. I did a movie with him called Bird, and I played Buster Franklin. And he was just so wonderfully respectful. Uh, and that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a wonderful thing when you get to have a director that res respects what you bring to the table. Doesn't impose, but um, is, a, is a wonderful guider to where he wants you to go. I love directors that are clear. Yeah, Joe Carpenter, because you played one of your first roles. Yeah. One of your first, but you played in The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing was my first movie. Yeah. Ah, your first? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, and you like John Carpenter? That's okay. I love her, but I've, I've, done, I've done two movies with John Carpenter. They Live and I, yeah. The Thing. And, uh, Again, I mean, you know, John works very fast. He works with a crew who knows him, and so it was it was great as far as timing was concerned because we usually work a 12-hour day from start to finish, and uh, he never really yelled. I mean, it was we had we had one uh, uh, instance where he raised his voice a little bit to us. And uh, it was funny because we weren't saying anything to him that we wouldn't have said to his face. But we were talking about a scene that we were shooting, and he was on the on the headphones. And uh, so I guess it could have sounded like we were talking behind his back, but we really weren't. We were, you know, I mean, it was nothing really disrespectful. But it was, it, but it was, uh, 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 it was, it was questioning a choice that he had made, uh, and as far as putting a scene in. We were questioning whether or not it would stay in the movie. And uh, like I said, it wasn't disrespectful, but it seemed like we were talking behind his back because the, uh, the bell had gone off and uh, there was some delay in the actual start of the scene. And so we were just talking amongst ourselves and we were having a conversation about, you know, the, the rehearsal process. And, and so he, uh, I think he, he just, he, he misunderstood the, uh, the moment that was going on. Like I said, it wasn't anything that we wouldn't have said to his face, except we just hadn't had a chance to. So, and, uh, so he, uh, he took a little bit of difference to that. Uh, 
but that was the only time in two movies I've ever heard him raise his voice. So I, and I in fact, love working with him. I've worked with him many times.